Okay, hi everyone. Um, so today I'm actually going to be talking about um, some paranormal experiences I've actually had throughout my life. Um, I've actually had... Five? I'm guessing? Um, and since, you know, it's almost Halloween and, you know, people are doing scary stuff, I thought I'd actually put up some actual real stuff. Now, I've actually been a follower of uh, paranormal investigation uh, shows, one in particular, Ghost Adventures. Um, so, just on the off chance they're watching, hi Zach, hi Aaron, hi Jay, um, what's the other guy, uh, hi Billy, sorry. Um, not that I think they're going to be watching, but you never know. Um, so, my first experience happened, well, like maybe nine or ten. Possibly a little bit older. Um, I was with my grandparents at, um, they live down south in southern Alberta. And uh, they took me to Lethbridge, and I used to love to go to museums. And Lethbridge has this one place called the Galt Museum. Um, I'm not, I can't really remember much of it. I think it's just art, sculptures, that sort of thing. And um, one thing I did not know at the time, I actually found this out after, uh, was that it used to be a hospital. Um, so. While I was going through the museum, I got the sudden urge to kind of break away and go down this hallway. That's where I had my first encounter. Um, now, as far as I believe, uh, what people think they're seeing ghosts, it's actually not, you know, like visual. That's why we can't really catch any visual evidence. It's all up here. It's the way I figure it, ghosts are psionic beings. Or like they're they're more psychic, so that's kind of how they communicate. They can manipulate energy, but you know when people see a ghost, as far as the traditional sense, that's what they're seeing. They're not seeing it with their eyes; they're seeing it with their mind. And the first ghost I saw, his name was George, and he kind of told me some stuff stuff that I'm not going to repeat, but. Um, I later found out that George was a man who was, uh, back in the 30s when it was still a hospital, was in for a simple appendix, uh, uh, appendectomy. And as they were pushing him to the elevator to take him to surgery, the elevator doors opened, but the car was not there and they didn't realize until after they'd pushed him in. So George fell down, he hit the bottom of the shaft, survived for a little bit, and then now he basically works around the museum. Um, fun fact, the um, museum's administration office used to be the children's ward and there are apparently a couple ghost children that like to wave, as far as I know. Um, so that actually led to what I think was a partial attachment for a while. Don't quote me on that. It's been many, many years and I can barely remember the experience. The next time we were actually at um, a... Okay, in Calgary there's this place called Heritage Park. They have like a lot of old like Albertan buildings, one of which is haunted by a young woman. When I heard this, I actually went and sought her out and I found her upstairs. And same basic thing. Psychic conversation. I'm not going to repeat what I said, but weirdly enough, she said a lot of the same things that the other guy said, that George said. Uh, those are the two definite, you know, experience with ghosts that I've had. Now we get to the stuff that are possible. Um, first, the apartment that I used to live in here, in Red Deer, was possibly haunted. All I know is every once in a while I would hear like someone yell, well not yell, but like 
a muffled voice saying, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. And at first I thought it was my neighbor, but my upstairs neighbor doesn't talk like that. Like, this was a fairly old building, like, built in the 60s. So 50 years old when I was living in there. And um, the floors are very thin. The walls, not so much. I could not hear anything that was going on. Well, I could barely hear anything unless they were blasting the stereo or something. From, like, the apartment that was behind me, but above me I could hear steps, coughs, conversations. Yeah, a lot. And, um, I talked to some people, and there was nobody fitting the description of the voice, because it sounded like an old man. Like an angry, drunk old man. And it didn't really occur to me that it might have actually been a spirit until after I moved. So, um, maybe you thought I was brave, maybe I thought I was just stupid, I don't know. Uh, the next one, actually... Um, there is a building here in Red Deer. It uh, used to be a law office. Um, I think they kind of turned it into a home again. But it actually used to be the home and the first hospital of Red Deer belonging to Dr. Parsons. Um, I don't can't remember what his first name is. Um, I think it's David or something. It's not Alan. <laughs> For those of you who are oh, Alan Parsons Project. Yeah, no. Um, and one day when I was going by on the bus, it was early in the morning, I could have sworn I saw someone just in the top window, just for a split second. Might have been a ghost, might have not been, might have just put my brain playing tricks on me. I don't know, but it's actually fairly close to the bus, st uh, bus station, which I think I had to go there to get to work. Um, even though, like, the bus station wasn't within walking distance of my home. And occasionally, yeah, I actually did walk back home. Um, the last one is, I'm not going to tell you who it was, but it was a house, at a house of somebody I know, and they have mentioned that, um, the house was actually built by a guy who built it for his wife, and, I don't know, a classic story, but this is a fairly new house, and, um, essentially, the house, um, well, she had like like a recording studio and like a like a like a salon in the back, like she was a hairdresser. But she ended up getting cancer and died. And um, these people had uh, the people I know had um, they got three little kids. Well, not little. One's actually almost a teenager. And um, um. The middle child's room, which was what the salon used to be, they thought was haunted because there was, like, she would not stay in there. And, um, um, you could definitely tell there was some, some energy coming, coming, from, coming from it. And I did a stupid thing. I went in, I kind of told the ghost to fear me. And it led to a classic attachment. But after that happened, I don't really feel the energy anymore. So I'm wondering, and I don't really hear anything from them if there's any more activity. So, But it was, um, I don't know if you can tell us, for some reason I'm shaking. I don't know why I'm shaking. I think I just need to get some water in me, but, um... I don't really feel the energy every time I go over there, and, like, I visit them quite a bit. Um, for privacy's sake, again, I'm not going to mention the names. Um... And, uh, I actually have one more story. It's actually not my story, it's, um... from my fiancé. Uh, my fiancé, um... used to live in a very old house in Manitoba when she was growing up. And the area she used to be in was, I think she said, the servants' quarters. Like it was like an old, old mansion, right? And uh, when her dad started doing some renovations there, that's when the activity started, and she could swear that she 
could see somebody standing over her bed. Um, I hope, I'm hoping I'm getting, I'm getting these details right. It's been a while since she told me the story, but she said I can say it anyway. If not, I might actually have to redo this video, like delete the video and then redo it. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so she started seeing this person by her bed. And uh, she also started seeing somebody by uh, the swing set. When she'd be on the swing set playing. This was when she was, I think, about nine or ten. I don't know. Sorry, sweetie, if I can't remember. <laughs> Anyway, um, so she told her dad, and her dad went and apparently prayed by her bed with her, and that's when everything stopped. So hopefully I remember that correctly. I know I remembered my own things correctly. Um, but those are six paranormal experiences that, well, five that I've had, and one that from someone I know who I've had that I actually got permission to tell it. Now, I actually do want to go hunt ghosts sometime soon. I don't know when, but, you know, it'd be nice to. Um, so I actually don't scare that easy. I do get freaked out more by living people than by spirits. But I do believe that, you know, there are spirits. And um, I do believe in an afterlife. It might not be the Christian afterlife, but it's an afterlife. Um, and yeah, hell, if the ghost adventures ever offer, I'm here for like some sort of lockdown if you want me. Anyway, guys, um, that's it for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, but yeah, I figure, you know, Halloween special, something spooky, but real spooky, not, like, fake spooky. I'm not going to go and do Outlast or Alien Isolation. I can't even do a decent playthrough of Alien Isolation because it doesn't really work that good on my machine. But that's just my opinion. So, till next time, guys. Later. This is Shocker Cyclone, signing off. Oh. And a little bit of pandering. Like, share, or... Basically, favorite this video if you like it. Um, it's just something different. Uh, it's going to replace the upload of Mass Effect today. Anyway, so. Enjoy! Shocker Cyclone out.